Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Zero Calvin. Today I have a short video for you on how to um, split an object into multiple parts so that you can, say, animate the individual parts separately. So I recently bought this uh, pair of garden shears for an animation I'm building in iClone, but the problem is they're just a static prop. They don't actually like separate or move or anything. So today I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna import the object into iClone. Um, I'll use the FBX so that the scaling should be correct. And um, first thing you notice, it's just plain Jane. So I'm going to uh, add the materials to it now. So I have all these texture maps. Not all of them are going to be used. Um, there's a clean version and a rough and a like a, a dirty version of the tool. So we're just going to use the ones for the clean version. I'm just gonna drag and drop the appropriate maps over. So of course we got base color that we have, which is cool. We have ambient occlusion. We have metallic. So it's already looking better. Uh, now we have roughness. So now it's really looking good. And now we have a normal map. And there we go. So now we have our textures on our model which is great. Now the thing we got to do is figure out how to uh, split this apart into multiple items. Um, we can't do that within iClone, but we can do it actually in Character Creator, believe it or not. So if we pop over here, we can say Edit in Character Creator, and it's gonna send it over to Character Creator like this. So in Character Creator, we have this, um, ob we're able to edit mesh and we can actually split the mesh apart. Before we do that, I'm going to um, change where the pivot point is because you notice if I move this or if I were going to rotate the pivot point is not where the nut is and I kind of want to make it there so that when I rotate these parts they're going to end up um, rotating in the correct spot so we do that at the very bottom here uh, there's edit pivot and I can just scooch this guy up and if I want, I can move it in the center, although that doesn't really matter. So that's good. Click Edit Pivot again, and we've done that. So now when we move or rotate, it's going to rotate around the correct place. We may have to do that again for the individual parts, though, once we separate it. So with this thing selected, I'm going to go to Edit Mesh. And we have something like this. Um, we can select things by element. And luckily this was modeled in such a way where these, um, these parts are discrete parts. So we can make one side of it, we can basically select one side and then select the other side. So I'm going to, I clicked this, I'm gonna hold control and click on the other parts I want to be part of one side. And down here we can click on extract mesh. Now we can do it on the other side. So we're gonna click that. I'm gonna click this, and we're gonna click this, and extract mesh. Okay, and now we can get out of this by clicking Edit Mesh again. Okay, so now if we look at our scene, our shears are actually uh, made of three separate meshes now. So we have the nut, and we have side one and side two. The problem is I don't think, I can't actually move or rotate those individually yet because they're all, all actually still part of this same mesh, even though they're, I mean, same object, even though they're um, separate meshes inside that. So make, so to make them their own thing, but parented to this, um, this object, we can take the two sides and convert them to sub item. So we'll do that. And then we'll do side two, convert to sub item. So now if we look at our scene, the only thing the main prop uh, has is the nut in the center. And then there's sub props attached to it, 
which are the two sides. So the distinction of that is there are their own individual objects now. So I could, you know, rotate them individually. The problem is our pivot points you see are not in the right spot again. They're off in no man's land. So we're just going to fix those real quick. So now what this lets us do is this lets us move around our object. Oops. This lets us move around the object um, in the scene with the upper level prop. But we can also now select the individual sub props and do a local rotate on them to make the, um, the prop function as it should. So we could, in iClone, set up fancy hinges and stuff like that and use um, the solid um, physics stuff, but there's really no point. This is such a simple prop. It's, it's just um, pivoting in one point. So we can just leave it like this and just use the pivot point for our purposes. So now that we're done, we can um, select this main prop again, and I can go send uh, back to iClone. And now, in theory, this has now updated, which it has. So now, oh, no, it actually came across as yet another thing. OK, so it didn't replace it. Um, so we're going to get rid of the old one. Cool, 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 cool. OK, perfect. So now I should be able to double click on it, select individual sizes, sides, and we now have a functional, oops, we now have a functional pair of shears. If I want, I can save this out in, um, in either program, really. Uh, so if you go to content, go to custom, go to Props, props, you can make a uh, subfolder if you want, but I think I'll just leave this alone for now. I'm going to click Save and just call this Garden Shears. Boom, there we go. So now we have a, our converted prop saved and ready to use for next time. And the neat thing is Character Creator and iClone, if you use uh, Character Creator 4 and iClone 8, they now share um, their libraries. So now this custom thing is actually available in Character Creator as well. So we can either make it an accessory or a prop or something um, with our character or load it in separately in iClone later on. So anyway, guys, thought you'd enjoy that. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.